and really be thankful for everything we have. I'm thankful actually for pushing me and some technology that our small group was able to continue to um, meet. We took a little bit of time off, but then we figured it out and we still figure it out. So, um, but I'm really thankful for the small group and how they've been able to, we've been able to keep connected. Mm. Yes, sir. I'm thankful for my wife. She can keep it with the kids. At home, it's, it's, it's tough uh, with distance learning and whatnot. I think for my kids, they've done a great job you know, with their schoolwork. And uh, I'll be thankful that uh, I got another year from off. Still, um, still keep it. So I just go around and uh, you can see her soon. Another one? Okay. okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> so two for one. Buy one, get one. Um, so uh, we welcomed another uh, granddaughter this year into our family, and I was uh, privileged to be able to go and be with her and see her when she was just one day old, even though she's probably in the office. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just thankful for my wife of 43 years that we've been married. Um, her health has improved over the last nine months, ten months since she started her uh, bi-weekly infusion, so it seems to be helping. We still have a long way to go, and uh, just thank you for my family, my kids and my grandkids, and a new son-in-law in the family, and my health. I've had, uh, the last two years, I've had three, four surgeries in the last uh, two and a half years, and I've come through them all with blazing consistency, with good knees, my cancer's gone, and um, just a, a blessing there. had one earlier this evening. Oh. It was close. We it, though. Huh? Very close. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> All right. Anybody else will continue to sleep?
Sorry. Get, get stuff and bring that back 
and go get something to eat. By the time I got back, it was all wrapped and I was done. So, uh, you know, many times for guys, it's uh, it's Christmas Eve right after the last minute. So, if any of you need to go by Walmart, we'll have you have you out of here soon, and you get it. Walmart's probably open till midnight, either by about uh, eight o'clock at the latest. Surviving the most wonderful time of the year. It's the most wonderful time of the year, but it can also be a very stressful time of the year. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25, it's a common passage. Uh, we're going to look at it again and then make a, uh, a few comments. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, The virgin will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Let's pray. Now, Lord, take this passage that we've all heard many, many times and help us to see a couple of new things here that we can use in our lives as we attempt to live our lives to honor and glorify you in your name we ask. Amen. The first Christmas certainly had its share of stress. And chances are that no matter how well you plan, your perfect Christmas that you have pictured in your mind will have some unexpected interruptions. Some of you have already had some. I'm sure the Merritt family did not plan earlier this year that they would not be able to be with Miss Sue because she would uh, be uh, hospitalized. I have family that recently buried members and lost many loved ones. And what do you do with the presents that are under the tree when someone that you have shopped for and loved for many years has passed? They're no longer able to celebrate Christmas with you. I hope you will see an altered Christmas plan as an opportunity for Christian growth. Let's look at two survival tips that can help us get through the most wonderful time of the year. Now, normally in Baptist circles, uh, the, the minister has three points in a poem. Not tonight. Tonight we'll have two observations and a point. The first observation or survival tip, if you please, that can help get us through this most wonderful time of the year is expect your best plans to be interrupted. Joseph and Mary were planning a wedding. Then God told them to also prepare a nursery. At that time, Hebrew marriages had two stages. Kedushin, which is the engagement part. Legally, the couple was married, but they didn't live together. They had not consummated their relationship. The Kedushin could last as much as 12 months. This tested fidelity, integrity, and in the case of an arranged marriage, it gave them time to get to know one, one another. Arranged marriages still happen in the world today. I love my mama and I love my dad, but I would not have entrusted them <laughs> to pick me a bride. I guarantee you that wasn't going to happen. Uh, depending on how you figure it, the actual divorce rate is about 40%. But for arranged marriages, arranged marriages where the couple did not choose, their parents chose for them, anyone have a guess 
what the percentage of divorces in arranged marriages? 5%. 4%. You're very close. 4% of people who did not choose the spouse that they had, maybe didn't even know them, but yet those marriages survive. Well, we can talk about it. We'll get to that later. As we'll, get to that. That's the one thing. we'll get to that in another study. <laughs> in order to break the engagement in a Hebrew marriage, or a Hebrew engagement, and a betrothal, you had to actually get divorced. So that is the interest in the engagement. It was, they were considered married, married, although they did not cohabitate, they did not live together. And that's why Joseph considered getting her a divorce quiet because she was found with child. Now, under the law, they could, they could stone her, and depending on the community, they would stone her. And so that's why he thought about putting her away quietly, letting her go away so she would not be stoned to death. The hupa is the marriage ceremony itself. Now that's C-H-U-P-P-A, and to say it in the orthodox way, in the true Hebrew, you gotta think of a cat trying to cough up a hairball. A chupa, chupa, something like that. The groom would use this time of engagement to prepare their new home and acquire or even make the furnishings for that home. Now, I'm sure Joseph was excited about getting married. Getting married. He was probably drawing up house plans, carving the marriage bed, because he was a carpenter. Big, big plans. Then he is told by Gabriel, by the Holy Spirit, by God, don't forget the nursery and the baby crib. Mary was planning an elaborate wedding picking out china patterns, I'm sure, looking for the perfect lingerie for the honeymoon. Big plans. But Mary, don't forget the diapers and the formula. Wow. I mean, did this throw a monkey wrench in their plans or not? Now, as tradition has it, Mary was probably about 15. Joseph was probably about 20. Can you imagine them? meeting in one of the arranged meetings where they uh, were allowed to uh, meet together and talk under the watchful eye of the family. And Joseph starts talking about floor plans, and wall color, and how things, he sees things getting laid out. And Mary says, uh, Joey, honey, we need to talk. I'm pregnant. Now again, short of divorce, death, or dismemberment, very few of us will have holiday plans interrupted as much as Joseph and Mary did. Now here's the thing, if God interrupted Joseph and Mary's wedding plans, we should realize that our Christmas plans are fair game for God to interrupt. We can make plans on top of plans on top of plans, but our plans might not be what God has planned for us. There is an old Jewish Hebrew saying that we plan and God laughs. James chapter 4 verse 13 says through 15, Now listen you who say, today or tomorrow we'll go to this city or that city. We'll spend a year here, we'll carry on business, we'll make some money. Why, you do, need, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little time, for a little while, and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. Here we are on day 288 of the 15-day lockdown. <laughs> To, to, to uh, flatten the curve. I don't see it ending anytime soon. When it comes to our plans or God's plans, 
Which ones do you think are going to come out on top? I don't misunderstand. I, I do not believe that this lockdown down was ordained by God. I, personal opinion here, this is not the white book. This is gospel according to Ken. I believe it was political tyrants who never want to let a crisis go to waste. If our God-given constitutional rights can be taken in an emergency, those tyrants who want to take our rights away will always generate an emergency. Bottom line is this. Expect your plans to be interrupted. The second observation or a survival tip that can help get us through this most wonderful time of the year is try to get God's perspective on the interruption. Joseph could have really blown this one. He pondered. He could have embarrassed Mary, disgraced her socially, had her executed, but he chose to, to, to divorce her quietly, buying her time to escape, maybe get to a city of refuge that they had at that time. He pondered. He also prayed. And Joseph got God's perspective on the matter. Who named Jesus? Joseph named Jesus. I'm glad that Joseph got it. I'm glad he understood that God was interrupting his plans. He prevailed. Two things happened. He got to marry a sweetheart, and he was honored to have been chosen to raise God's only begotten son. Too many times all we see are the dashed plans, the mixed, the mixed ideas, disappointments, defeat, disappointment. Many of us don't even consider that God might have a hand in some of our interruptions. Joseph pondered, he prayed, he persevered. He didn't spend a hundred dollars worth of worry on a five dollar problem. Many times we just worry about things that we shouldn't be so worrisome about. God had a plan and God was still in control and Joseph accepted. Joseph also accepted that nothing happens without God knowing about it. Life does not always go as expected. Chances are your perfect Christmas plans will have, or already have had, some unexpected interruptions. Romans chapter 8 verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, you only qualify for that if you love God. Do you love God? Are you called according to his purpose? That phrase, according to his purpose, can be translated in the presence of, in the direction of, towards, within the range of, during, in the course of, about. Is your purpose in life to do what God wants you to do? If so, know that all things work together for good. And you will survive the most wonderful time of the year. Now on Sunday, for the last Sunday of the year, we're going to be looking at two major philosophies in our society. K sera sera, whatever will be, will be. You only live once. Go for all the best that you can. And then carpe diem, seize the day. Do everything you can today for God's honor and glory. I hope you can join us. Let's pray. Now, Lord, for thankful and grateful for the opportunity to gather here this evening. We know that there are churches out there that are still shut down. There are believers who are not allowed to fellowship with their fellow members. We're thankful for each and every one that took the time out of a busy holiday to come to God's house, house this evening. And we pray that your word will speak to you each and every one of our hearts. In your name we ask these things. Amen.
Now, it's our tradition to light the candle. And Mr. Bird, if you would start that out for us. All we're going to do is go down the aisles. We'll have you remain where you are. In a room that's pitch black, in a room that's pitch black, a candle can be seen from far away. But you get enough candles and it will light up the entire room. So as we each light our candles, we out in the lights. And then Steffi will lead us in the worship. Thank
Let's all stand together for closing word of prayer. Now, Lord, we're grateful and thankful for your gift, your son. We celebrate this time of year. Help us to live worthy of him as we remain in this world. Go with us now to our families. Take us safely to our homes and bring us back to the next appointed time. 